Hi, this is Cliff Brake from Beck Systems. We're going to do a short demo of the Modbus functionality recently added to the Simple IoT project. What we have here is a number of Modbus devices. These WellPro devices are um, IO devices where you, where you can connect a Modbus to them and then read digital inputs, outputs, analog inputs, um, re you can they configure relays, a number of different I.O. functions. They're, they're pretty nice. This um, Advantech Atom module is, is similar to the WellPro, a little higher end module, costs more. And then these devices here are temperature sensor modules. This one here has an I2C temperature and humidity sensor. So it can read uh, humidity 42% and temperature 23C. Then this device is an RTD module and an RTD is, a, is also a temperature sensor that can read a much wider range of temperature. I have a USB to mod or RS-45 uh, adapter here and that's how I'm connecting my computer to these devices. And then these devices here all mounted to a DIN rail. So, so let's start up Simple IoT. So I'm just going to run it from the source code. This is more of a development flow. Okay, let's switch to the web browser. So the default account is admin at admin.com, admin. And then this this node here is basically the computer that Simple IoT is running in. We'll just call that root. And here's the admin user that we logged in as. So if we expand the, the root, root details, we can add a, a Modbus. Modbus uses client and server a little differently than, than one may think, but the client is actually the device, the master device on the bus and the server is actually the devices that you're reading. So we're going to configure this instance as a client. 9600 baud, we'll pull it once a second and set the debug level. Okay, now that we have a bus defined, we can add uh, IOs to this bus. First one we're going to add is a coil a coil is a is a writable bit in a device to control the this LED here. So let's call this the LED. Then these WellPro devices are real easy to use. Um, the output start at address zero and the inputs and everything, so it's real intuitive. And since all these devices are on the same bus, I've given them different IDs. So this would be ID two, three, four. Uh, five, six, I believe. So we're, our IO is attached to the first one, so we'll call that two, zero. It's a coil. Okay, so now that that's configured, we should be able to. Uh, you can see that since we had it off, as soon as it started talking to the device, it turned the LED off. So let's turn the LED on. And then a few seconds later, this LED here turns on. Let's turn it back off. Okay, so the second device we want to configure is a input, GPIO input. And that input is connected to the switch here. So let's call this a switch. Two, zero. And the inputs are called discrete inputs in Modbus. So now, <coughs> if we turn this switch on, notice this, this label here turns on as well, and we can turn it back off. Okay, this, this device here also has analog inputs, and I have the first analog input connected to the voltage on the LED. So let's add another I.O. We'll call this LED. 
LED voltage ID 2 address 0 because it's the first analog input and the register value needs to be scaled to give us voltage and I'll just look that up in my notes here quick So the formula for voltage is um, we multiply by 10 and divided by, by divide by 4095. So it reads from 0 to 10 volts, and there's 4096 bits in the A to D. So that's where they get that. So if you divide that out, we get a value of this, and the offset is 0. We'll give the units. that's all we need so let's save that okay so now it's reading 10 volts because the LED is off so that the um, the, dr the outputs on the device basically ground the LED the leg one leg of the LED so if it's it's not on it get basically it's pulled up to the 10 volts so if we turn the LED on Now we'll notice the LED voltage changes to 2 volts, and that's roughly the voltage across the LED. Uh, we can also add a temperature sensor. Let's see. And we'll read the device 5, 0. And the scale factor for these temperature sensors, I think it's just divide by 10, so we'll do 0 0.1. And a C for degrees C. So we, Modbus devices present data in a number of different ways. The most common is a 16-bit integer. Uh, sometimes they'll pack data into 32 bits and, uh, and even 32-bit floats. So we can decode any of these data types, we just have to tell it which one. So we'll save that. Okay, this doesn't seem to be reading, so let's go back to our console. Okay, now we notice down here there's a EOF, that's end of file error count, so that basically means the device isn't responding and we can see that it's, it's uh, continuing to increase. So any of these error counters we can just reset. Oh, I remember what's wrong with this. So this is a, um, it's kind of a strange device, but typically holding registers are registers you write in a device, but this particular device um, uses holding registers for read, read values, which isn't, isn't really typical. I, I don't think it really is consistent. So what we did in, in Simple IoT, we added the ability to have a read-only holding register. So now if we save this, let's go back to 5. Now if we save this, yeah, now we're seeing 19.5 degrees C. So that's, that's working now. We can increase the, the debug level. And if we, if we do that, it'll actually show us the Modbus levels or the Modbus data that's going across the bus. So I'll just change the view. So you can see it's it's uh, showing the actual Modbus uh, operations and the data that's being transferred to and from each device. If we take the, mod, the debug level up to 9, Now it actually shows us, in addition to all that, the raw data that's on the bus. So typically you can you use this if you're trying to debug a problem or, or learn how to, to read a new device. So I'll turn that back off. If you'd like to try Simple IoT, you can go to our GitHub site. It's just GitHub Simple IoT, Simple IoT. 
and we regularly build releases so you can download a release for whatever platform you're using and if you have a USB to RS-45 device and a Modbus device, you can quickly set this up and give it a go. Uh, notice we also build ARM, a variety of ARM releases, so you can download one of these to, to run on like a Raspberry Pi or a number of other embedded devices. Hope that's helpful, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out on our uh, community forum or, or a GitHub issue or, or whatever works best for you. Thanks.